you gonna be on my side if I let you up? Sure, Tick, sure. I'm on your side. Just set me up. I'll do anything you say. Bullies want their way, no matter who gets hurt. Wild salmon is one of the most healthy and sought-after foods. It has sustained families and whole communities. It is always in high demand at fine restaurants and the supermarket. But there aren't many salmon around these days because of the bullies of Westlands. And where there aren't a lot of salmon, people are hurt. We've been forced into a situation where you have absolutely no control over your own destiny. And it's pretty hard to stomach. We're down to the hardcore in Eureka. There used to be hundreds of salmon fishermen in this port. And we're now down to uh, a couple of dozen. Fishermen are wonderful folks. I mean, they've taken two years off to give a lot of people a chance to restore this, this industry. And, and that's a lot of giving up. I don't have my normal routine, so I, Spending time on the boat this time of year is what I do, so instead of fishing, I'm working on it. In 1992, we thought we won the battle with the uh, Central Valley Project Improvement Act. So, thought, oh boy, we've won. Now we get to go back to work fishing and the fish will be there and it's all fixed. But it didn't work out that way. You know, they have the money to stay in court all the time. Westlands caused this pain. The Westlands Water District is the most powerful, politically connected, and wealthiest agribusiness water district in the country. Formed in 1952, Westlands encompasses more than 600,000 acres of farmlands in western Fresno and Kings County. They exist to provide water to their members from the Central Valley Project. But under the rules that regulate who gets water first in times of scarcity, Westlands, as a junior water rights holder, is at the end of the line. But, like all bullies, they do everything they can to push their way to the front. Uh, welcome. A uh, few comments, first thing. This is a meeting in February in Santa Rosa. The audience came to listen to state and federal fishery managers. My job here today is to try to present to you the Central Valley uh, 2009 Chinook escapements. Uh, that happened uh, this last year. Commercial fishermen, recreational fishermen, business owners. They listened to presentations about fish statistics. They looked at graphs and charts, all aimed at doing the impossible, figuring out if there are enough fish in the ocean and rivers to allow a salmon season. How many salmon are out there? There's a 95% chance that the SI will be between zero and half a million fish. Well, the stocks of salmon have dropped like a rock. Look at these numbers. As recently as 2002, the Sacramento produced nearly one and a half million fall Chinook salmon. Last year, it produced just under 40,000. What happened? The selfish bullies that run the Westlands Water District happened. They have decided that their interests outweigh any need of balance, sharing, giving a damn about their fellow Californians, or even caring at all that there are other species that live here too. To those who have been harmed by their words and actions, it often feels like getting the universal sign of arrogance to anyone who does not agree with their bully boy tactics. You can hear it in the voices that carry their messages. Ladies and gentlemen, this has become a dust bowl. Now, if you would have told me that those, that water would have stopped. I would have believed maybe Al-Qaeda struck, not the federal government. A lot of people are probably watching out there and wondering, well, are these salmon fishermen really out of work? Uh, the truth is that the salmon fishermen can still fish, they just can't fish for salmon. There's a fire burning in the Central Valley, and gosh darn it, it's time to put that fire out. Federal judge coming in saying, oh, I think we should protect the Delta smelt, the little fish. And I think that the Delta smelt is more important than farmers having water and workers going to work and us producing uh, food for the world. 
To be fair, the Westlands Water District does acknowledge that the wild salmon runs in California are in bad shape. There isn't any question that the, uh, the, the um, salmon fishery on the west coast of the United States is in trouble. There isn't any question that the, uh, the Delta smelt is in trouble. Um, but, but, but. But. It seems as though every step that federal scientists have suggested to restore the fishery is greeted by Westlands with a threat of legal action. We intend to file another lawsuit. Thank you for the introduction. And then Westlands dismisses the science, too. Here is a Westlands executive who had been in the Bush administration speaking to a gathering on the subject of California's difficult challenges. Listen to his comments about the fish in the Delta. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we have problems. We have fish that have declined um, for who knows what reasons. We've spent about 20 to $30 million a year studying the Delta and monitoring the fish, trying to understand them. Uh, we don't understand them, but we do have regulators who like to shut the pumping plants down. And here is Congressman Devin Nunes, who represents the district that includes much of Westlands and certainly one of Westlands' loudest voices, giving his take on the science that Westlands doesn't like. It's important for all the viewers to know that the reason that the water's been shut off is because of the Endangered Species Act. There's two different biological opinions that are out there, one dealing with a little bait fish called the Delta smelt, and another one that basically involves nearly every fish on planet Earth. We don't know if anyone from Westlands was at this Santa Rosa salmon meeting, but they were most definitely on the minds of the people who have suffered from Westlands' self-righteousness. Water, water situations in the river. Look at the water situation. Just put it like it was. They started pumping like hell. Caution is advised, yes, but focus it in the right place. Now, there is absolutely no question that there are many reasons for the sad fact that wild California salmon are on the edge of extinction. That said, in the last couple of years, we believe the biggest reason is Westlands. Their arrogance and bullying tactics are the reasons why. You see, it seems that whenever Westlands gets their way, salmon and people suffer. So it's a fair question to ask. Is letting Westlands have their way worth destroying the Delta and potentially making wild salmon extinct? Other Salmon Water Now videos have documented that the increasingly saline soils on the west side of the valley will eventually not be suitable for growing. Meanwhile, Westlands benefits from huge taxpayer subsidies for the water and power they use as they eke out a few more years of farming. Farming dying lands with water needed for the Delta and salmon that thousands of people depend on. The taxpayers uh, foot the bill for the construction of the facilities and the farmers get an interest-free loan. Uh, then they have uh, also power subsidies. The Central Valley Project produces a lot of electricity from all its various generating plants. And the first priority for that power goes to run the pumps in the Delta. And while the contractors like Westlands are charged for that pumping, they're charged just a fraction of the rate of what you and I might pay for PG&E power. When you look closely at the debate over water in California, you can see misinformation, distortions, and greed oozing like an infected open wound. Westlands has excelled at framing the discussion about water on their terms. For the most part, major media coverage has ignored the economic tragedy that has impacted thousands of people along hundreds of miles of California and Oregon coastline. And the story about the environmental disaster that the policies that Westlands pushes have had on the once bountiful runs of wild salmon. In the Salmon Water Now video, A Bad Week for the Truth, you can see the Westlands propaganda machine's effectiveness. In one week, the Wall Street Journal and CBS News gifted Westlands with stories that were carefully crafted by PR masters. The Journal and CBS should have been ashamed of what they did.